turning the senses inwards, begin to observe the breath, creating quietness, pacifying the face, the cheeks, the jaw, the tongue, feeling the throat soften and the brain become quiet. In this manner, entering more and more in a dialogue with the body, beginning to feel the inner body rather than just the outer body and becoming aware of the touch of the breath everywhere in this inner body, where it's felt, where it's not felt and how it can be distributed more evenly, more soothingly through the system. Now keeping the shoulders rolled back, gently bend the elbows and lift the hands, pressing them together in front of the sternum plate. Feel underneath the ridge of your thumbs, the sternum plate itself, and try to push it forward to meet the thumb so that it becomes more broad. Keep the front shoulders rolling back and the face quiet, inhabiting with the breath new space, new dimensions, soft, smooth inhalation, soft, smooth exhalation. Placing the inner body within the outer body, feeling its expansion, its presence, and then keeping the chest lifted, gently drop the chin down towards the chest, and in this way, surrender the brain to the heart. And then gently release the hands. And then slowly open the eyes. And we're ready to move on into our asana work. Our first pose will be a lying down pose using the block to help break up some of the congestion of the lungs. So lying with your legs straight in front of you in Supta Tadasan, you want to place the block in such a way that when you lie down, it's going to be underneath the shoulder blades. So you may have to adjust it a few times. Keep the legs in Supta Tadasan. In other words, rolling in, kneecaps facing the sky and inner feet touching. Then once you're lying down, roll the shoulders back, bring the hands above the head, Bend the elbows and take hold of the elbow tips with your hands. Keep the heels pressing down and the feet alert. Keep the front thighs pressing down. Move the buttocks towards the heels to keep the lumbar long so that we begin to make a curvature in the middle upper back rather than the lower back. As the block presses into the middle upper back, making us aware of that entire area and the shoulder blades, Begin to go with the direction of the block, directionalizing the flesh, the bone, so that the chest, the sternum, the lungs are opened from behind, from inside. Keep the sides of the neck even and avoid hunching the shoulders up towards the ears so that there's always a nice clean space on each side of the neck. And gently pull the elbow tips with your fingers to the wall behind you and down to the floor. And now stretch the arms straight back behind you. Readjust your head if it needs to, making sure the back of the neck is long. And change the cross of the arms, taking hold of the elbows again, and resettle into the other side of the pose. Make sure that you keep a presence in your feet, in your legs. If the knees start to roll apart and the inner feet lose their connection, tension can be created in the lumbar spine. So keep the thighs rolling in and the sacrum energetically moving towards the feet. Use the inhalation to create more length in the front spine. From the pubic bone to the sternum, make a longer line. From the sternum to the collarbone, make a longer line. Feel the skin of the armpit stretching, the triceps stretching. And keep going with the flow of the block, pressing the back ribs in to help penetrate and feel more of the lungs of the chest. Relax the throat, the tongue, the cheeks. And keep quieting the brain. So that there's less thinking and more feeling, direct experience. 
And now gently releasing the hands, holding onto the sides of the mat, slowly come up onto your forearms. And then gently push yourself up to sitting. So we're going to be coming to a pose called Supta Vilasana and we need some equipment. If you're very stiff, you may want to have two or three bolsters or a bolster with many blankets on top, bringing height so you don't have to lean back as far. And if you're all right, then you'll just take one blanket for your neck and head and put it at the end of your bolster. Then you'll take a strap and you'll come and sit at the front of your bolster in a kneeling position with your knees together and your feet apart. And then you're going to move your calves back and out to the side to clear the back of the knee joint before sitting down on your bolster and moving the feet in so you're really on the front of the feet. Taking your strap, you're going to go ahead and put the strap over your thighs and tighten the strap up, having the buckle right in the middle of the thighs. This helps the knees to stay together and the knees to move forward. So this is Virasan. So now we're going to come to Supta Virasan. So moving forward a little bit, see if the buttocks will come to the floor. Move the bolster back just a tiny little bit so it's not jamming the lumbar spine. And now we begin to lie down. Supta means lying down in Sanskrit. So anything that Supta is going to be lying down. As you're lying down, make sure that you occasionally lift the buttocks and move them towards the knees. So the lumbar stays very long. Then roll the shoulders back so the chest is open. Use your hand to just adjust the head to make sure that the back of the neck is long, the sides of the neck are even, and the blanket is really supporting just the neck and head, not the shoulders and then extend the arms out to the side with the palms turned up to the sky. Allow the eyes to close and the entire front face to recede backwards towards the earth, towards the ground. With an exhalation, release the shoulders again, allowing the front shoulders to roll back even more. Keep energetically directionalizing the sacrum towards the knees and use the inhalation to lengthen over and over again the front spine drawing the pubic bone up to the sternum, the sternum to the collarbones, and feeling that broadness and that length start to come to the trunk. Lightly press the back ribs in so that the body melts over the shape of the bolster, and the bolster, like the block, is gently pressing the back body up to open the chest to the sky. Every now and then, take your hands to your buttocks, lift your buttocks and manually move them towards your knees again. And now stretch the arms straight behind you, reaching for the wall behind you with your fingertips, and then bend your elbows, hold onto your elbow tips, and settle the arms onto the blanket behind the head. Make sure to use your fingertips. Keep them alert on the skin of the elbow. They're gently pulling the elbow tip both back and down. And as you do this motion, you're pressing the shoulder blades up to the sky, beginning to feel new sensations in the front trunk, the side trunk, the armpit chest, the armpit area. And keep softening the throat, the jaw, because the throat and the jaw are intricately linked to the shoulders and the chest. And when we open one, if we're tight, then we're going to lock down somewhere else, unless we keep that awareness alert. Keep moving the trapezius muscles down the back to clear the neck energy. And draw the ears in towards each other to keep the ears soft. Observe the increasing length to the front trunk, to the front side waists. Keeping the hips passive, the roots of the thighs pressing down. Have a soft, smooth and regular breath. And now re-stretching the arms straight behind you. See if you can find more length Stretch the arms, stretch the fingertips, and then change the cross of the arms and retake hold of your elbow tips and settle back down to the blanket. Use the breath to observe for any hidden tension that's arising. And use the exhale to release this tension, to find a way through it, so that slowly the inner system is beginning to be linked. The areas of the body are not separate, and the lungs are getting an opening the breath, and with the breath, your awareness is beginning to circulate everywhere through the system. Relax again all of the little muscles around the eyes. 
move the trapezius muscles down the back. And while pulling the elbow tips to the floor, press the back ribs and the shoulder blades up to the sky. If you're feeling any strain in the lumbar, it's because your buttocks have started to move towards the bolster. Remove them towards the knees, get that length in the lumbar. And now re-stretch the arms straight behind you. And then keeping the arms straight, bring the arms up so the fingertips face the sky. And then exhale, release the hands. Take hold of your feet with your hands. And slowly come up to your forearms. Step by step. And then coming back up to Virasan. Taking the strap off your legs and coming out of Virasan. We're going to come now to the lovely and delightful Supta Badakonasan. So sitting on the edge of your bolster, if you have very tight groins, you may want to have two blocks to place underneath the outside edges of your thighs, just to hold your thighs for you. Otherwise, go ahead and take your strap again. It's already in a nice loop. You can make it wider if you need to. And go ahead and put the strap over your torso, over your trunk. And then slide that top end of the strap over the feet and tighten up the strap, bringing the heels closer to the groin. Make sure the back of the strap is really on the lower hip so that it tractions the hips in the correct way. And then using the hands, push yourself forward off the bolster until the buttocks are on the floor. You may be able to tighten the strap a little more now. If you're using blocks for the groins, make sure to move them forward so they're still supporting the outer legs. And then reaching with your hands, just gently push the bolster back a little bit so the lumbar is not jammed and begin to lie down onto your bolster. Move your buttocks towards your heels and then go ahead and place the neck, the head on the blanket and make the adjustments you need to so that you can really feel the sacrum moving towards the heels, that you really feel that the sides of the neck are even, the back of the neck is long and that you're lying right in the middle of the back of the skull as much as you can access. Then re-stretch the arms straight behind you, squeezing the elbows straight, stretching the fingertips and through the arms, stretching the waist, finding that length in the front trunk. Now bend your elbows and settle your elbows back to the blanket behind you and close the eyes. Refind your breath and the contact with the breath. Using the inhalation to lengthen the front spine and the exhalation to flow the muscles of the back down the back towards the hips. The anus should face the heels. If the anus is not facing the heels, the hips are tilted incorrectly and pretty soon there'll be some strain in the lower back. So move the buttocks, the hips in such a way that you have the sensation that the anus is facing directly your heels. And then on the next inhalation, draw the pubic bone up to the navel, draw the navel to the sternum, draw the sternum to the collarbones and roll the front shoulders back, moving the trapezius muscles down the back with the exhalation. Relax the forehead. See how sometimes the forehead tends to push upwards towards the sky when there's a lot of thought process going on. So use the breath to draw the forehead, the front lobe of the brain, backwards. Keep the root of the tongue passive, which will in turn help the entire jaw to relax, the outer and inner ears to relax. And make sure that your fingertips still have a presence on the arms so that they're gently pulling the elbow tips back, which brings length to the waist. And that they're also pulling the elbow tips down to the ground. And with that action, you'll be pushing the shoulder blades up to open the chest. Now re stretch the arms straight behind you, squeezing the elbows straight, finding through the stretch of the arms the stretch of the waist before changing the cross of the arms and resettling the arms back onto the blanket. Check again that the buttocks, the sacrum are moving towards the heels and use the inhalation to again draw the pubic bone to the navel and then draw the navel to the sternum and then draw the sternum to the collarbone and with an exhalation move the trapezius muscles down the back. Press the shoulder blades up and feel the entire sternum, front and side trunk, armpit area, opening more and more with each breath. Don't force the breath in every way. You can directionalize it, but don't force it. Keep it soft, unstrained, the throat unstrained. 
and just allow the inner body to aerate with this softness, to liquefy, to decongest. Observing the process, relaxing more and more so that you're witnessing the process from a place of detachment. Keep pulling the elbow tips to the wall behind you and down to the ground, keeping that penetration of the armpit chest, of the sternum chest, but all in softness, being a receiver of the opening. And now restretch the arms straight behind you. Find that parallelness. before releasing and bringing the arms now to the side of the body. Slowly beginning to make our way up, bring the hands now to the outside edge of your thighs if you need to, or to the floor, and gently pushing yourselves up until you're seated and you can remove the strap and come out of Supta Bara Konasan. So continuing with this process of opening the chest naturally using supports, to helping that aeration and curvature, you're going to take your bolster and a few more blankets, folding them as I am. There's the first one. Now take a second blanket and again fold it lengthwise in half and place it on top of that first. And then taking the third blanket, this time fold it in half the other way. This one's going to be for your shoulders your neck, your head. So coming to sit in front of the blankets, the blankets are lengthwise over the bolster, which has been turned now. Make sure to sit right on the blankets at first, and then you can slide towards the floor. As you lie back, you want to find a place where you're back enough, far enough, that the shoulders can come to the blanket, so they're not just hanging in space. There needs to be support. Then use the hands and even up the sides of the neck making sure you're really resting on the back skull before extending the arms out to the side of the body and then extending the legs so that the feet are in line with the edges of the mat. Really roll the thighs open, rolling the inner ankles to the outer ankles, the inner knees to the outer knees. Roll the front shoulders back. The elbows can be bent. The forearms are parallel to the sides of the face. So you can see once again how the shape of what we're lying on is creating an openness in the front body and the energetic body and allowing that circulation to move more freely without any strain on our part. All we have to do is keep directionalizing for optimum opening. So with the knowledge that the lumbar tends to overwork and overarch most of the time for most of us, keep moving the buttocks towards the heels, the sacrum towards the heels, the anus towards the feet and find the now familiar inhaling from the pubic bone to the belly button, the belly button to the sternum, the sternum flowing to the collarbones and the trapezius muscles flowing down the back as the shoulder blades press in. So there's a loop of breath and awareness in the trunk that enhances the correct opening of the inner and thus outer body and in the process helps us to open the lungs to soften the intercostal muscles, to bring prana, oxygen, vascularity to areas that have been a little shut down if we've been ill or tired. Keep relaxing the face, the throat, the ears, the brain, releasing all of that which is inside the head to enter a more direct field of experience and beingness. No forcing of the breath, just a soft and natural aeration in which you allow yourselves to melt with gravity, with slight directional application. And the shape of the support, the bolsters, the blankets will do the rest of the work for you. Passive and letting go more and more until the quietness is beginning to be felt and resting in that quietness that's feeling itself everywhere. And now bending your knees so that the soles of the feet are on the floor, you're going to use the feet against the floor to just push yourself backwards a little bit more. 
or preparing to come out, but moving slowly, feeling each part of the coming out process. So just staying here a little bit with our knees bent, our feet on the floor, our shoulders rolled back, and the buttocks moving towards the feet. We relax again the front throat and pacify the root of your tongue, inhabiting the body, the breath, more and more deeply, feeling that sensitivity, observing the sensations that come, that are being experienced. Soft, smooth inhalation, soft, smooth exhalation. Keep allowing that aerating, liquefying process, that melting. And now slowly begin to come out a little bit more. So bring the feet a little bit closer in order to push yourself backwards more, sliding backwards. So now your head, your shoulders are on the floor and your hips are on the blanket that your head was on. And allow yourselves to lie passive, to lie inert. Even if there's a desire to move, keep pacifying, quieting, resting, melting into the ground. And then gently roll over to the right hand side and slowly push yourselves back up to sitting. So taking the equipment we had now, the bolster, the blanket, but putting them so they're all in line with each other, we're going to use those blankets to penetrate into the abdomen as we come forward to Yoga Mudrasa. Then you'll take the last blanket and you'll put it right at the end and that's going to be for your forehead so your nose isn't squished. Then drawing the equipment in and drawing the blankets in so that they're pressing right on the lower abdomen, lift your front ribs and go ahead and extend yourself forward to Yoga Mudrasa. And now turn your head to the right so that your left ear is parallel and settle yourselves in this way. So when we turn the head to the sides, we can decongest the sinus area. The arms are forward, holding onto the elbows. There should be a feeling of comfort. And you should feel the blankets supporting the abdomen, the organs, gently pressing them up as you rest down against them. Keep deepening the groins, relaxing the hips, gently pulling the elbow tips forward so you keep length even as their softness. Keep the trapezius muscles moving down the back and the left ear parallel to the blanket so that the neck, the jaw, the throat is soft, is quiet. Feel how when there's support, the organs can really relax, whereas if the blankets were not holding gently the lower abdomen, they would just puff away from the spine and there would be a loss of sensation. So using the props and using the awareness they bring to bring more sensation, more subtlety, so that we feel ourselves more fully, we feel the breath more fully. Keep moving the elbow tips forward so the skin of the armpit stays long. And check that your chin isn't moving up away from your throat, that you're not tensing the back of the neck. And now lifting the head up and changing the cross of the arms and turning the head to the left and resettling. So now your right ear is parallel to the blankets, to the bolster, to the floor. Once again, move the trapezius muscles down the back so you clear the neck energy, the throat energy, the brain energy. And allow the groins to deepen, to relax, the hips to broaden. Observe the sensation of support from the blankets and what newness it brings to the experience of the front trunk, of the abdomen, of the organs. Keeping a soft, smooth breath that relaxes the nervous system. Every now and then, check that your elbow tips can't move forward a little bit, so that as the body releases, you stay with the length that it's offering. And visualize aeration coming to the sinuses, to the mucous membranes. And now lifting the head back up, this time facing forward, you're going to lift your chin and place your chin on the blanket and bring the hands behind you, interlock the fingers together and stretch the arms back. Now as you stretch the chin forward, 
move the front shoulders back strongly and charge the arms backwards like two arrows. Move the trapezius muscles down the back. Keep moving the front shoulders back. Now change the interlock of your fingers. Keep stretching the arms back but moving the chin forward so we're clearing the neck here, creating length. Sides of the neck even. Keep stretching the arms back, front shoulders back. And then exhale and gently release hands to the floor and slowly, gently making your way back up. Centralize, neutralize. And now preparing for our next pose. Bharavajasan. So you're going to sit on the end of your bolster with your knees facing forward and your left foot resting on the sole of the right foot. Everything should feel comfortable, so take the time to adjust so you really feel that you're sitting securely. And then pull the buttock bones back and out to the sides. Turning and twisting to the right first, bring the left palm to the outside edge of the right thigh and the right fingertips to the bolster behind you. Use the inhalation to lengthen your spine and use the exhalation to twist, to rotate, to roll more and more to the right. Using softness rather than brutality to twist. Tap into the organs with an exhalation moving the organs on the left hand side of the abdomen to the right hand side of the abdomen. Keep the front shoulders rolling back so that opening of the chest that we've created is maximized, is really felt. And then exhale and release. Changing sides, bring your calves, your shins, your feet to the other side of the bolster and place the right foot in the sole of the left foot. Find a place of comfort where you feel stable on the bolster, your knees are facing forward. And then with your hands, reach and pull the buttock bones back and out to the sides. And now preparing to turn and twist to the left, Bharavajasan. Bring the left fingertips to the bolster behind you and bring the palm of the right hand to press against your left thigh. So both hands and both arms are equally doing the work to help you to turn and twist. Draw the front face back. Recede backwards. Use the inhalation to lengthen the front spine and the exhalation to roll, to turn, to twist. Delicately moving the front shoulders back, bringing more openness to the sternum, the armpit chest. Gently pressing the back ribs in to open the chest and finding the sensation of the organs on the right hand side of the abdomen and with the exhalation rolling them to the left. And then gently exhaling and releasing. And coming now to preparation Bhadavajasana number two. So the legs are very similar, just the feet change. This time it's the right foot, the foot closest to the bolster that will go onto the sole of the left foot, the outer foot. Our hands will also be a little bit different. You're going to use the back of the left hand instead of the palm and a little bit higher up towards the hip. Right fingertips are still on the bolster behind you. Using the inhalation to lengthen up the front spine and the exhalation to roll, to turn, to twist. With an exhalation, roll the left abdomen to the right. Roll the front shoulders back. Visualize the vascularity that's gently coming to the organs as we twist and turn, refreshing blood, promoting health and healing. And then exhale, release, changing sides. Preparation number two, Bharavajasan, moving the legs to the right-hand side of the bolster and placing the left foot in the sole of the right foot. Finding that stability, moving the buttock bones back and out to the sides and then turning and twisting to the left-hand side. So remember, we're using the back of the hand this time and bringing the back of the hand a little higher up towards the hip as we turn, as we twist to the left. Keep that length of the spine and now roll the right abdomen to the left, roll the front shoulders back. Soften the throat, the face. And just allow the breath, the spiral, the movement to gently vascularize. Keep the eyes quiet, the brain quiet. Letting the body, the breath do its work. 
and then exhale and release out of your Bhagavajasans. Moving the equipment we have, we're going to now take a block and a strap. We're going to come to what's called a supported Setubandha Sarvangasan. This is a beautiful restorative pose that really helps to open the chest, the lungs, to clear things and promotes deep inner breath and sensation. So having your block and your strap, let's go ahead and sit on our mats with the legs in front of us. We're going to be lying down, but first of all, we're going to put the strap on our legs. So thread your feet through the loop, bring the strap right up to the middle thigh, and then tighten the strap so that the buckle is right in the middle of the thigh, so it's not hurting the flesh. And this is keeping the knees going forward, the thighs parallel. Then lying down, having the knees bent so the feet are on the floor, you're going to take your block now, and you have two options of height. You can either go this height, or you can lift it up to take it up higher. Then press into your feet and lift your hips up off the floor. Lift your heels so your bum will go higher. And place the block right underneath the tailbone. So this means that you have to go below the waistband of your trousers. Once you feel that you're really supported, that you can really feel the sacrum moving towards the knees and the block supporting the tailbone in that way, roll the shoulders back and extend the arms out to the side, palms up to the sky, re-rolling the shoulders back until you feel the full penetration of the front shoulders rolling back and the back ribs pressing in and the chest opening. Keep the feet parallel, lift the inner arches of the feet. And now reach with your hands behind the block, interlock the fingers, and one more time, roll the shoulders back, one at a time. Roll the left shoulder, roll the right shoulder. And then press the arms down to the floor as you lift the chest open to the sky. So here we are in the first section of Situbandha Sarvangasan. Keep the sides of the neck even and long, the cervical spine long. Avoid lifting the chin up away from the throat, which would shorten the back neck. Keep pressing both triceps down into the ground, rolling both shoulder bones back and pressing the dorsal spine, the shoulder blades into the upper back to open the chest. If there's any pain in the lower back, you may need to just lift the buttocks a little bit and move them towards the knees again so the lumbar stays long. And now bring your feet a little bit closer and reach with your hands for your ankles. See if you can hold the outer ankles. Allow the block to push the tailbone up to the sky, towards the pubic bone. Keep the feet even and firm, pressing into the feet to help the buttocks to lift, the tailbone to lift. And now with that new opening, release the ankles and extend the arms back to the side, turning the palms up to the sky so that the entire arms are spiraling open from the root of the arms, which is the shoulders and the center chest. Pacify the face, the cheeks, the tongue, the ears. And find with your breath that loop using the inhalation to lengthen from the pubic bone to the navel, the navel to the sternum, the sternum to the collarbones. And using the exhalation to directionalize the muscles of the back down towards the buttocks, the buttocks towards the knees, and the tailbone to the sky. Feeling the imprint of that curvature coming more and more to the middle and upper back. Observing the different quality of your lungs, of the sternum area. Feeling how the abdomen has become long, and with that length, there's a spaciousness for the organs. And now go ahead and bend your arms and place your hands on your buttocks. And with all of that openness now, let's adjust a little bit more. So taking your hands and using the hands to move the buttocks towards the knees again and to feel more length coming to the side waists and the abdomen. So more length coming to the organs as well. You're now going to bring the hands above and behind you, bending your elbows and holding onto your elbow tips. And pressing the elbow tips down to the floor, pressing into the feet. And with that action, lifting the buttocks higher and higher to the sky, going with the action of the block to press the tailbone up and keeping that awareness of the back body, pressing the back body 
firmly to open the trunk to open the chest. Observe the new spaciousness, the imprint of the inner body. It broadens, it widens, it comes alive. And now changing the cross of your arms behind your head and resettling the upper arms down, the forearms down, pressing the elbow tips to the floor, pressing into the feet, pushing the buttocks up, the tailbone up, pressing the back ribs in. Find with your breath that inner loop, the inhalation coming up the front spine, the exhalation moving down the back spine. Keep that sense of observation so that you're experiencing it at the same time as directionalizing it, at the same time as receiving it. Front shoulders back, trapezius muscles away from the ears and sides of the neck even. And now releasing your hands, put your hands on your buttocks and lift your hips up high in order that you may move the block and slowly coming back down to the floor, making sure that the buttocks move again towards the heel so the entire lower back is supported by the earth before stretching the arms out to the side and neutralizing, centralizing, observing the difference between left, between right, between front, between back, requieting the brain, and then gently release your legs from the straps, and interlock the fingers around the fronts of the knees, coming to Dvipara Supta Pavana Muktasan. We're going to come to some supine hip openers now. So go ahead and cross your right leg over your left leg, completely and entirely. Your hands are holding the shins, and see if your hands can creep down towards the ankles or not. And pull the shins and the calves, the feet, towards you. You'll feel the backs of the hips broadening. Keep the front shoulders rolled back, the collarbones long. The inhalation lengthening the front spine, the exhalation going down the back, and broadening the hips, the groins, softening the abdomen. And then releasing to change sides, and now crossing your left knee completely over your right. The hands are holding the shin and reaching towards the ankle if they can. With your hands gently pulling the shins towards you, keeping the feet flexed, rolling the front shoulders back. And finding again with the inhalation the length of the front spine, and with the exhalation, the flow of the back moving towards the buttocks, softening, broadening the hips, the groins, the abdomen, releasing, relaxing. And then exhaling and releasing and placing the feet back on the floor. So what a difference we feel already. The lungs, the heart are open. The abdomen has been toned, and twisted. The hips are feeling a broadness, a meltingness. And we're ready to move on into the next pose. So you will now need to have access to a wall. So get yourself close to a wall. Take the bolster and put it close to the wall with a little gap. And in that gap, you're going to place the block. So there's the wall, there's the block, which is down on its lower side. And then there's the bolster. We're setting ourselves up for Vipariti Karani, which is just the most amazing restorative pose the final flowering of everything we've done so far. So to get into the pose, you have to come in sideways, otherwise you won't be able to get close enough to the wall. Placing your hips, your buttocks on the bolster, and then you're going to lean back using your hands for support, and then swing your legs up the wall. And before lying back, just move yourself a little bit closer, making sure you're not coming off the bolster. Get your buttocks as close as you can to the wall, using the feet against the wall to press, to lift the buttocks up to get in closer and then straightening the legs, put your hands on your thighs and push your front thighs towards the wall, your quadricep muscles to the bone. In this way, you get more length in the front trunk as the front trunk moves away from the quadriceps that are moving towards the wall. And then rolling the shoulders back, bending the elbows and resting the arms on the floor with the palms turned up to the sky. The sides of the neck are even, resting directly in the middle of the back skull. Lining up the inner knees, the inner feet, feeling that symmetry between the left and the right, that evenness spreading through the body. Take a moment to observe what the support is doing. 
and how even as you're lying here, a slight directionalization of the body helps enhance the pose. So keep moving the buttock bones towards the wall and using the breath to create that inner loop. The inhale coming from the pubic bone to the sternum, the sternum to the collarbones. And the exhale traveling down the back body, gently pressing the back body in to open the front chest. Smooth, soft inhalation. Smooth, passive exhalation. Keep the brain quiet, the eyes receding backwards. The ears being drawn into each other. And the root of the tongue passive. Receiving the pose, allowing the pose to do you. And just observing its effects, its sensations from a detached place. More and more softness. More and more letting go. Witness the inner circulation of the body. How much more clear it feels. That sense of aeration. And now, widen your heels apart just slightly and allow the thighs to roll open and let the legs now become completely passive. No longer lining up the inner knees and the inner feet. Complete softness in the legs, the inner knees rolling to the outer knees, the inner ankles rolling to the outer ankles, the big toes rolling towards the little toes. Relax the buttocks again completely to the bolster. Relax the groins, let the pubic bone be broad, be wide. And the abdomen soft, resting on the spine. Be this meltingness. Unimpeding the flow of liquefaction. Of happiness, of lightness. Gently ironing out any little areas of tension that may arise in the throat, in the tongue, in the arms, in the fingers, in the toes. So keeping that inner dialogue. Observing the front body, the back body, the sides of the body. And now gently begin to wiggle your fingers, to wiggle your toes. And then bending your knees, pushing your feet against the wall and moving yourselves backwards, left, right, wiggling back until your hips are on the floor and you can cross your ankles and rest them on the bolster. Reroll the shoulders back, the palms turned up to the sky and with an exhalation, settle back down into the ground. Settling into that softness, into that smoothness, into that subtle field of awareness. Observing the sensations. And now changing the cross of your ankles and resettling the legs back onto the bolster. Directionalizing the buttocks towards the feet. Ensuring that the sides of the neck have stayed even, that the lower jaw is still hanging from the top jaw in softness. Resting completely on the floor. Resting in that awareness. And now gently begin to prepare to roll over to the right hand side of the body. Just lying there for a few breaths, allowing awareness to arise upwards to include the external world. Before using the hands to push yourselves back up to sitting. So we're almost done. We're just going to end this practice with a little bit of pranayama to help the lungs on their journey of decongestion, to help the body to heal from tiredness, to bring spaciousness. So taking your blankets, 
and placing them one on top of the other with a little gap that's going to be for the lower back. And the third blanket is folded the other way and this becomes, of course, the blanket for the neck and the head, so it goes at the end. Then come and sit in front of the blankets, which are going to support the spine. And lie back so that the little ledge you've created with the first blanket is right there on the lower back. Tilt the pelvis in such a way so the buttocks move towards the heels, so there's no overarch in the lower back. And then settle down, making sure that the rest of the blanket is supporting the middle and top spine. Move the neck blanket in, make sure your chin is not jutting away from your throat. If it feels that it is, you can double up the back blanket so it lifts your back head a little higher. So your forehead is slightly sloping down towards the nose. This helps to keep the brain quiet and unconstrained so that you can really enjoy your pranayamic experience. And then extend the arms out to the side, the shoulders rolled back and then extend the legs straight to the corners of the mat so the feet are wide and roll the thighs apart, rolling the legs open, inner ankles to the outer ankles, big toes to the little toes. In this way, settle, feeling the comfort, feeling the support. If anything's uncomfortable, adjust, because as we move into pranayama, Anything that was a little bit uncomfortable becomes very uncomfortable as we become more sensitive. And once you feel yourself settled, then gently close the eyes. And with an exhalation, refine the softness of Vipariti Karani, but lying on the floor. Soft, smooth inhalation. Soft, smooth exhalation. Settling deeply inside the body. Feeling the breathing in the inner body. The outer body quiet. Don't worry about how long or short the breath is for now. Just have a relaxed Shavasan breath. Just looking for the quality of feeling and finding the breath from within. Pacifying, liquefying. All the attention on the inner body. Sensing its sponginess. Its liquidness. Feeling a lightness from within. And letting that lightness spread everywhere. Soft, smooth inhalation. Soft, passive exhalation. The outer body receding to the center. and the center further receding inside. The forehead, the temples, the brain cells quiet. Keep observing this pacification, this recedingness, this emptying process. Keep also the pauses between the breath soft. The pauses between the inhalation and the exhalation Soft releasing, contributing to the emptying process. Maintaining that quietness in the brain cells. The temples quiet. The jaw, the tongue. All is receding and emptying. We're going to transition now from this Shavasan state 
into one cycle of Viloma 1. Viloma 1 is a way of working with the inhalation where we inhale and then we pause. We continue the inhale and then we pause. We continue the inhale and then we pause and then we softly exhale. Between these cycles, when needed, the body can have a few normal cycles without pauses. And when there's comfort again, you'll start again. So still in Shavasan, even smooth, relaxed breath. Just beginning to take this in, what we'll be doing, what that means. Remember not to exert yourself. It takes time to move from the passive Shavasan work into the inhalation process, which is a more active state. So don't force. Just search and observe for the guiding quality and the cycles will naturally improve. So after a slow exhalation, let us now begin. Inhale and pause. Inhale and pause. Comfortable inhalation. Inhale and pause. And gradually complete that inhalation and slowly exhale. Slowly and softly exhaling. Continuing with soft breaths. The brain cells passive, indifferent, quiet. The brain shouldn't pull the breath and the brain shouldn't pull the air in any way. Slowly exhale and gradually going now for the next cycle. Inhale and pause. Inhale and pause, the brain quiet, inhale and pause, gradually completing that inhalation with quietness in the brain cells, and slowly exhale. Have a few cycles of normal breaths now to further pacify the brain cells to purify the senses of perception even further. Being quiet. And then after completing an exhalation, a slow, soft inhalation with the pauses. Pauses that are natural and free of strain. Simple just smoothly inhaling and giving a pause. Slow, soft, smooth exhalation. The forehead is quiet, the eyes descending, receding deeper into the eye sockets. Then after your exhalation, slowly begin the inhale and pause. Inhale and pause. Inhale and pause. And add now this new dimension. That you are not inhaling, but you're receiving the inhalation. That you are not the doer, but the receiver. and slowly exhale. Have a few normal breaths, quiet, passive, indifferent. The breath occurring, happening. No one is making it. In this next cycle, settling into that receivingness more and more. Inhale and pause. Inhale and pause. Inhale and as it occurs, just receive it. 
See how this mood of receptivity can be imbibed in the cells. And let the chest inhale and receive the inhalation. And then receive the slow, soft, smooth exhalation. Quietness. Letting go. And now shifting from this, no more receiving, indifferent to that, letting go of any hankering or wanting to be in the receiving state, letting go of any desire of anything, unattached, indifferent. Just two more cycles to go, maintaining that indifference inside. Letting go quietly. Inhale and pause. Inhale, pause. Inhale, pause. Soft exhalation. And from that state of detachment, coming back now to normal breath cycles, relaxed, soft, quiet, resting in that indifferent observation, resting as that. And then softly, gently, wiggling the fingers, wiggling the toes, moving the ankles, moving the legs, until you can gently roll over to the right-hand side of the body, lying passively here, quiet, inert, before slowly using the hands to gently push yourselves back up to sitting. And coming to take a seat on the blankets that you were just lying on. Crossing the ankles in front of you. Pulling the buttock bones back and out to the side. And turning the palms up to the sky, closing the eyes. Allowing the awareness to slowly rise from the depths to include the external world without any jarringness. An integration of everything. So that that detached peacefulness is still present. I hope you feel so much better. Namaste.